No matter what your training goals may be, working out from home is almost certainly going to help you to get better results right away. And in fact, if you're overweight or generally very out of shape, then I would argue that training from home is the only way to build muscle. Likewise, if your aim is to get into incredible superhero shape, training from home is probably the only chance you realistically have. Let's imagine for a moment that you're very overweight and you really want to get into decent shape. In this scenario, you'll most likely have tried numerous different strategies to get into shape and you'll have possibly been let down with the various workouts and diets you've tried. This is the tried and true story that so many people experience. They buy into countless supplements, countless weight loss programs, diets, training regimes, etc, etc, and they get nowhere. But the problem isn't with the training programs. The problem isn't that they're somehow untrainable and unable to achieve the shape they want. Rather, the problem is that they can't stick to the regimes and they don't manage to get to the gym often enough. Why? Because people who are overweight are usually tired. They're normally overweight because they're not active enough and they're not active enough because at the end of the day, when they get home from work, they have three hours before bed and they spend that time crashed out on the couch. Small amounts of exertion make them sweaty and out of breath, meaning they won't exactly enjoy training. Sticking to any training regime in this scenario is going to be hard. But when you add in the need to drive to the gym and then train in front of countless strangers feeling very self-conscious, well, is it any wonder it doesn't work out? And then you have to shower. Compare this with training from home, which will allow you to slowly introduce small amounts of training into your regime to increase your energy levels, to increase your mood and to increase your health. Everyone can fit 10 minutes into their day especially when the equipment they need is right there and they can train in privacy. You see the difference. But what about those real athlete types? These are the people with no problem generating the energy they need to train, people with no problem finding the will to train. But with the best will in the world, even top fitness fanatics on YouTube only have a finite amount of time in their day. There's only so much time that they can spend on training. If they're going to the gym every time they work out, it means they're going to be spending time and energy getting there, meaning there's less in the tank for their actual workouts. Then there's the fact that they have to wait for the equipment they want to train with to become free. Then there's the fact that there are some things you just can't do in the gym, you know, some very basic things in fact. Now imagine you take a different approach and you build a home gym in your garage. Even if this is just a bench press, this is now a bench press that you can use every single day. And this is a bench press that you can use whenever you want to, without having to drive there or wait in the queue. Or maybe you need something more specific, you know, something like a hanging bag that you can use to practice martial arts. Being able to train whenever you need to, with no queue and no drive, that's when you start to see truly incredible transformations. That's when you truly never skip a day at the gym. So yes, training from home is the only way if you really want to smash your goals, no matter what they are. But of course, there are some big challenges and some big questions that face those who want to start working out from home. Keep watching and let's take a closer look at how you can go about building muscles from home with programs that are guaranteed to work and in some cases get incredible unheard of results. So what are these challenges of training from home? Surely nothing could be easier than staying in shape when you have a bench press right there in your own home. Unfortunately, it's not that simple and there's a good reason that most people will start out by hitting a gym. The first challenge is simply stocking up your home with the equipment you need. It is possible to get into great shape using only body weight training and we'll be discussing that in more detail later on. The thing is though, in order to get fast muscle building results, training equipment does help. That means dumbbells, pull up bars, bench presses, treadmills and all manner of other things, all of which cost money, take up a lot of space and require some basic knowledge to use. That's the other issue here too, knowledge. 
A lot of people simply don't know how to train on their own from home, and this makes it remarkably difficult for them to build big muscle without going to a gym where they can meet trainers and see other people working out. Attempting a barbell on your own from the comfort of your own home can easily end up in a slip disc or buckled knees. Fear is going to be immobilizing for a lot of people in this respect and prevent them from getting into shape. Another issue a lot of people will have a problem with is motivation. If you're trying to get into shape in your living room, you have to try and avoid the distractions of the TV. If you're training in your bedroom, you need to stay motivated even though your bed is right there. But even this isn't the hardest part. The problem is, in order to build your strength or your fitness, you really need to be able to push yourself. If it's muscle you're trying to build, that means you need to be able to create muscle tears and you need to pump your muscles with metabolites. More on this later. This is much easier to do when you're lifting big heavy weights and then dropping down each time you reach failure. It's much easier when you have a trainer barking at you and it's much easier when you're in a room filled with other people working hard, with no distractions and with a soft floor that you're fine to sweat on. The same goes for losing weight. How do you lose weight? Well, with lots of cardio. That cardio needs to be in high volume, whether that's achieved through high intensity or long duration. Whether you're running for hours or whether you're doing intense HIIT workouts, either way, training requires you to push yourself. And when you're at home, you will often not know how to do this, nor be able to do it because you won't have the right equipment or necessary space. But this series is here to change all that. In these videos, you'll learn the secrets to training in such a way that you can break down muscle and transform your metabolism quickly from the comfort of your home. Once you understand the logic, once you crack the code, you can go about building the power and health you're looking for. So, let's get started. To start training from home, you're going to need to create your own home gym. This means finding the right equipment and stocking up your home, now whether that's a spare room, your living room or even a garage, which is just ideal. The exact equipment you're going to need is going to depend largely on the goals of your workouts and what you're trying to achieve. The equipment you need to burn calories and lose weight, for instance, is quite different from what you would use to build massive muscle. As we're going to learn later in this series though, Building muscle is still actually one of the key ways to burn fat. The more muscle you build, the more you'll drive up your metabolism. You'll find there are certain things and certain principles that will apply no matter what your aims are. And there are definitely some specific pieces of equipment everyone should own. Keep watching and let's take a look at what some of those items are and how you should approach this process. You're going to be faced with some unique challenges when you begin building your own home gym. The first of these is the simple fact that your home gym shouldn't cost too much. If you're relatively new to the gym and you don't have any equipment yet, it can be tempting to stock yourself up with everything you think you might ever need and end up spending a small fortune. Likewise, you need to think about how you're going to store your equipment. If you have a room dedicated to being your gym, then this latter point will be easy enough. But if you do not, then you need to think about how you can make a gym that will be easy to take apart and put back together on cue, or one that's simply small enough and compact enough that it doesn't matter too much. Oh, and you also need to make sure you aren't going to smash any cabinets or go through any tables. The best tip in this regard is to start small and then build your way up. This means buying just a few items that you absolutely need, you know, to begin with, and then approaching the process in a way that leaves you with the potential to expand and build upon that start. Take dumbbells, for example. Now, dumbbells are useful for practically every workout under the sun, and you can hit all manner of different body parts. But you're going to need dumbbells that are heavy enough if you hope to really make an impact on your muscle growth. Of course, heavy enough depends not only on your current progress, which is going to change with time, but also on the move you're doing. Lateral dumbbell raises are difficult to perform with anything above 10 kilograms, even for a trained athlete. 
Conversely though, 10 kilograms would be incredibly light for doing dumbbell presses. So the way to approach this challenge is to start out with dumbbells that can be increased and decreased in size. This means you should be able to remove and add weights as the situation requires and as you build up. Normally, you can get dumbbell sets for around $30 that let you increase the weight up to about 20 kilograms. And this is a great starting point. Or you might want to buy two lots of dumbbells, which will then allow you to build up further still. This is just one example of how you can approach your home gym in a modular and compact way if necessary, while at the same time saving money. Another example of something like this is the pull-up bar. This is an incredibly unobtrusive item and one that will cost you about $10. You can even get a pull-up bar that doesn't need fixing onto the wall like this one. You know, they'll simply fit over the door frame in order to fix into place. The best piece of equipment to upgrade your pull-up bar? Gymnastic rings. Gymnastic rings are simply plastic rings that attach to a rope and can be looped over a pull-up bar. These allow you to perform ring dips, muscle-ups, the iron cross, reverse push-ups, you know, pull-ups from a lower height with your legs touching the floor stretched out in front of you, and all manner of other things. And the best thing about gymnastic rings is they cost very little and they can be stored away easily. A skipping rope, meanwhile, is a great alternative to a treadmill where you can also do a surprising amount with a bulwark, and that's a piece of metal that offers resistance when squeezed. As we'll see later on in this series, there are also lots of things you can do with everyday items from around the home. So think a little outside the box. Use these tips and the principles behind these tips and build yourself a gym that does everything you need it to without taking up all the space in your home. But for those looking for more specific instructions, the following is a good list of equipment that you can invest in over time to gradually build up your gym. Now note that none of these things are absolutely essential to get started except the pull-up bar and possibly the dumbbells, depending on your interests and goals. OK, well, here's how to start. First is the pull-up bar. And as mentioned, a pull-up bar is the bare minimum you need to start training and building muscle. The reason for this is that the majority of muscles can be trained using body weight alone. By performing press-ups, you can train the chest and the shoulders. By performing sit-ups, you can train the abs, etc. However, the parts that are hardest to train without equipment are the biceps and the lats. These are pulling muscles, meaning you need to be pulling something in order to work them. Seeing as you can't pull the floor towards you, that means you either need to hang or curl. Once you have a pull-up bar, you can train your entire body though it will be easier if you get a couple more items too. And the first are dumbbells. Now, dumbbells are incredibly versatile and are used for much more than just bicep curls. They can also be used for all manner of presses, you know, for triceps, for rows that work the lats, etc. You can also use them to add weight to your body while you train your legs. Make sure you get dumbbells that can be increased in weight. Start with 20 kilogram worth and buy two sets, giving you 40 kilograms in total if you already have a good level of strength. Then there's a bench, and if you want to take your training to the next level, then look at investing in a bench. This will allow you to use your dumbbells in a much more efficient manner in order to do dumbbell presses, flies, and all manner of other moves. The best bench will be one that has an adjustable back, and this will mean you can sit on it or lie on it, and that will in turn mean you can do isolation curls and other moves with it as well. On top of this, look at getting yourself a bench that can fold up in order to put it away. This way, you can tuck your bench under a bed or inside a cupboard, and it doesn't have to get in your way as a result. Then there's an exercise mat. Now, this is not completely essential, but you'll find that training without an exercise mat can cause your floor to become slippery with sweat and can make a mess of your home. What's more is that a mat will make it easier for you to perform moves like sit-ups without hurting your back or buttocks on the hard ground. It's also good for stretching and more. Then there's a skipping rope. Now, for simply burning calories on the spot, there are a few things better than the simple skipping rope. Then there's kettlebells. Yeah, now that you're beginning to get more advanced, 
For training the legs and burning calories, kettlebells are incredibly useful. And that's because they will allow you to perform kettlebell swings and all manner of squats, you know, such as goblet squats. This in turn will mean that you can build leg strength without needing a bar to perform deadlifts and squats. That's good news, because performing deadlifts and squats requires a lot of space in your room and are expensive to set up. A kettlebell can also be used for all manner of functional strength exercises, including things like one-armed presses. Then there are gymnastic rings. Now, we've already touched on the amazing benefits of gymnastic rings. And the great thing is that these will let you do all the same exercises that TRX does, but for a fraction of the price. In fact, they let you do a lot more, seeing as TRX isn't really suitable for dips. And finally, there's a bench press. And for those who really want to get serious, a full bench press will eventually be a good investment. This will mean getting a bar as well, in which case you might want to move into permanent setup so that you aren't loading and unloading the bar every time you want to lift. Now you have the gym, it's time to learn how to use all that equipment in order to start triggering some serious growth. Now, how do you get muscle to grow? How can you do this from the comfort of your own home without the help or guidance that you would get by working out in a real gym? Well, let's take a look. In order to build muscle, you need to trigger hypertrophy. This is simply the technical term for muscle growth, and it actually occurs when you're resting. This makes muscle building a two-part process. Part one is the exercise that breaks down the muscle and marks it for growth, and part two is the growth stage that occurs after you've finished lifting, you know, when you're at rest. And this can occur through two separate methods. These are myofibrillar hypertrophy and sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. The precise science behind these principles is still something that's being argued, and there are those who deny that there are accurate descriptions. However, ask any bodybuilder and they'll tell you there are broadly two ways to build muscle that seemingly correlate with these concepts. And these two ways are muscle damage and metabolic stress. On top of that, you have something else at play, which is the ability to build strength. Strength is often, but not always, related to muscle size. The other factor involved, you know, that you need to account for, is muscle fibre recruitment. OK, so that's a lot of words I just threw at you. What does any of it mean? Simply put, your muscles are made up of lots of tiny strands called muscle fibres. These are actually cells, you know, just like the cells that make up the rest of your body and the neurons that make up your brain. That means they have nuclei and sarcoplasm, if you remember enough of your high school biology. The difference is that muscle fibres have multiple nuclei and they also have the ability to telescope in order to contract and expand. Of course, when this happens en masse, it causes your muscles to contract and expand too, and that's how you lift things in the gym. Unfortunately, there is no way you can create more muscle fibres. This is known as hyperplasia and has only been known to occur under very rare circumstances. However, what you can do is to break down the muscle in order to make it grow back thicker. You do this by lifting heavy weights to failure, and especially under stretch, at which point you create micro-tears in the muscle. Proteins are then used to repair those tears, which is what causes the muscles to come back larger. This is what also causes DOMS, this is delayed onset muscle soreness, and that's why you might find it hard to lift a mug of coffee the next day. This is what we call myofibrillar hypertrophy and muscle damage. The most important factor here is to overload the muscle. There are other factors too though, such as making sure that you train the muscles from multiple angles to hit every fibre, and training with both fast and slow form in order to train the fast twitch and slow twitch fibres. Fast twitch fibres only kick in when the slow twitch fibres aren't capable of lifting, and these are naturally the thickest and strongest types of fibres in your muscles. That's why you need at least a certain amount of weight in order to recruit them. 
So what does sarcoplasmic hypertrophy involve? Well, this is muscle growth caused by swelling the muscles with fluids. When you lift for long enough, you gradually pump the muscles with blood and use up your lactic acid systems, filling them with those chemicals too. In other words, the part of your body that is working will start to become swollen with blood, nutrients, oxygen and energy. And if you keep on lifting, it causes that part of the muscle to become fuller and fuller and occludes the area, you know, like wrapping a tourniquet around it. Now the good news. This also triggers the release of metabolites, chemicals that trigger growth such as growth hormone and testosterone. At the same time, the muscles become more efficient at storing sarcoplasm and glycogen in order to perform for long durations. This creates a more puffy looking muscle that can perform for longer rather than a harder, leaner muscle that can generate more short term power. So this is sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and it's caused predominantly by metabolic stress. The key factor in bringing about this is time under tension and it will lead to that feeling of pump in the gym. Both types are useful and when you combine both forms of training you can build more size and power. As a general rule, bodybuilders tend to train more with sarcoplasmic methods, whereas powerlifters use more myofibular approaches. Then there are those who say there's no such thing as sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Think of this as a useful cognitive tool for understanding the process. At the end of the day, bodybuilders know that lifting heavy for small reps equates to more power, while lifting lighter for high reps equates to strength. Combining both is power building. Finally, there's one more concept we need to recognize here. Muscle fiber recruitment. Because if you look at someone like Bruce Lee, you'll see that it is possible to be immensely strong without having to have a lot of muscle size. How? By using a higher percentage of your muscle fiber in every movement. Bruce Lee was a master of this, but there are a number of ways you can train to gain more control over your muscle fibre. The main key is to train at the very highest end of what you're capable of, resistance-wise. This forces your body to recruit as many of the fastest twitch fibres in the muscle as possible, which strengthens the neuromuscular junction to increase your raw power output. Bruce Lee would even use a technique called static contraction where he would push or pull against an immovable force to practice generating as much power as possible. Add this to your routine and you'll become even more deadly.